Father, if a pope is not going to preserve and protect sacred tradition, what is he doing there? He's being a very bad person. I mean, if he's really a pope, okay, if he really is a pope, then obviously he's failing Christ. He's failing the faithful. And he is setting himself up for a terrible judgment because of his failure. But it is possible for him to be an actual legitimate pope and not uphold sacred tradition? There are popes who have not... Well, there are two different questions, I think. I notice that when she's asking, there are popes who have not upheld sacred tradition because they simply didn't do what they were supposed to do, but they didn't take any positive action against sacred tradition. They just didn't teach the truth. They let error grow. Uh, Pope Honorius I is an example of that. Pope Honorius I, uh, who reigned about the year 640, right, late 630s and so on, Pope Honorius I has always been considered to this day a true Roman pontiff. I don't know that anybody has questioned that, ever. That he was a valid pope. And yet he failed miserably to defend the faith. Um, there was a, a heresy at the time which was very virulent in the East. And uh, the Patriarch of Constantinople was faced with it among the populace of that area, uh, the heresy denied the operation of our Lord's human will. So it essentially said that Jesus Christ, as God, could will the crucifixion, but as man he could not or did not. This is a heresy. It takes uh, basically the humanity of Christ out of the crucifixion, his willingness to suffer the crucifixion for us as God and man. So it would undo the Catholic understanding of the redemption wrought on the cross. And so this was a very serious matter. It was incumbent upon bishops and the Pope, well, it was incumbent on everyone to fight it. Every Catholic had to resist this error. Uh, but uh, the Patriarch of Constantinople was a man named Sergius. We talked about this before. And Sergius decided that it would be much better to avoid conflict and controversy um, by coming up with some statement of faith which was so ambiguous that everybody could say the same words, but they wouldn't mean the same thing. But he thought that would smooth things over and keep, keep the lid on this. Um, and so that's what he did. He, he fabricated a, a, a statement of faith, a credo that they could pray, and it was so ambiguous, so unclear, that the Catholics could say it, and the heretics could say it. And um, the called the monophysites, monothelites at the time. So anyway, um, well, there was a bishop in the east, actually in Jerusalem. His name was Sophronius. He understood what was going on. I think he received the probably uh, mes message of this statement of faith. And uh, he recognized that this is an abomination. This is heterodox in the eyes of the church and could not be allowed. So he contacted the Pope, Honorius, uh, in Rome, and Honorius's reaction was to say, well, this is divisive. We simply won't talk about this. And so he, he gave the order that this must not be discussed. Everyone must studiously avoid talking about this. Exactly the wrong answer, right? The emperor liked the idea because, again, he was interested in peace. He didn't like this conflict in the people. So, um, so he backed up Honor Honorius's decree with a decree of his own, uh, exacting pretty serious civil penalties for violating the Pope's order of silence in the face of heresy. Well, of course, the heretics didn't really pay much attention. Uh, the Catholics at first did, though. You know, they, their first instinct is to, to obey. Uh, but, um, of course, they couldn't. They couldn't in good conscience. Um, and so there were, there were popes and priests and no doubt lay people who spoke out, uh, not only violating or defying the pope's command, direct command, <clears throat> but defying the emperor's command. In other words, it was not only, I guess, considered to be a breach of obedience to Honorius, it was considered to be illegal and a crime by the emperor. And so he would actually <clears throat> seize people, uh, confiscate their goods, 
uh, cast them in prison. Uh, in the case of uh, St. Maximus the Great, uh, I mean, he was sent into exile as an old man and, and died in exile, basically being worked to death in a death camp. It was like a concentration camp. And um, so, uh, but Sophronius in Jerusalem uh, spoke out very boldly against the heresy and, and defied, he actually defied both the emperor and the, uh, and the Pope Honorius I. He defied the pope, a man who was a sitting pope, recognized the sitting pope then and now. <clears throat> the church canonized him for doing that. The church considered him, Sophronius to this day, a saint. And he's on the calendar of saints of the church, and so is St. Maximus the Confessor. St. Maximus the Confessor, who I mentioned earlier, is St. Maximus the Great. St. Maximus the Confessor also is considered to be a martyr for standing up for the faith, even though in the process he was actually defying a direct order from the, from the Holy See, the Pope, and uh, the Emperor also. So uh, this is a prime example of, of a Pope who did not defend the faith. He didn't teach the error formally, but he didn't defend the faith, and that was considered a horrible crime. Uh, in fact, uh, by the end of that century, uh, just about 40 years later, at a general council of the church, St. Leo II, I think it was, uh, actually condemned not only the heretics who were teaching the, the heresy, but actually lumped with him Sergius, the patriarch of Constantinople, who came up with that ambiguous statement of faith, and Honorius, and lumped him together with them as, as the heretic, one of the heretics, because he failed a, a solemn obligation to defend the faith as the Pope. Um, so, um, yeah, it's possible to be a Pope and not to stand up for the faith. A Pope can be delinquent that way, and, a, and in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the Church, a criminal. In fact, um, in, 19, in, in the 680s, um, the church formally excommunicated Honorius, who died about the year 640, 642 or something like that, uh, or some, about the year 640, and uh, formally excommunicated him, even though he's not been taken off the role of, of the popes. <clears throat> 